Hey, welcome to the Week in Byte. I'm Daniel Snyder, and this week, the S&P 500 announced their index reshuffling. And we're gonna start the show off by breaking down the moves here and taking a look at what this, the rating of the Seeking Alpha Quant system has given to each. So, for people listening to the podcast, I'll do my best to highlight what we're looking at, but if you'd like to see it with yourself, you can, of course, watch this episode on Seeking Alpha's YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Seeking Alpha, and it'll be on there waiting for you. So let's dive in by starting with the additions to the index. First up, on semiconductor, ticker symbol is ON. As you see here on the rating summary card, the authors on Seeking Alpha have a strong buy, Wall Street is a buy, and the quant system is reading a strong buy as well. When we dive in a little bit deeper, you'll see that the quant system has been a buy on this stock for quite a while, even back here on, let's see, what day was this? August 3rd of 2021 we saw was the last date that it looks like the quant system had a buy on the stock and then moved up to a strong buy there when the stock share price was about $45.67 a share. Today, that stock is sitting around $64, so already getting a nice return on your capital there. Moving into the next ticker symbol, we have Keurig, Dr. Pepper, ticker symbol KDP. And as we see today, share price is around $36.35. This is being recorded on Thursday, just as a reminder. And we have a, a buy rating across the board from the authors, Wall Street analysts, and the quant system. Diving in a little bit deeper, same scenario. It used to be a hold for the quant. It has flipped to a buy as well, in agreement with what is happening with the S&P 500. And lastly, Vici Properties, which if you've been watching the show for quite a while, you know that Brad Thomas and his team over at iRead on Alpha absolutely love this stock. I mean, year-to-day performance, it's up 3.81%, as you can see here, while the rest of the market, as we all know, is down over 10%. The quant system does have a hold rating on this stock, while the authors for Seeking Alpha are at a buy and the Wall Street analysts are a strong buy. If we dive into the quant, we can see that the, the D revisions grade is most likely what's holding this at a hold. The revisions lately have one upside revision for EPS, and this is in the last three months, just as a reminder, eight revenue numbers are up revised. There is one revenue down revision on VC property, VG properties, excuse me. Uh, again, that ticker symbol is VICI. And if we look at the quant history here, we can see there were a couple moments in time where we have had buys, sells, no, sorry, no sells, just buys and holds. And if you have held through the storm, you look like your capital is safe. And just remember, this is a REIT. This is a real estate investment trust that does pay out a dividend, as you see here, $1.44. The yield is about 4.5%. Short interest currently at 3.59. It's just something to keep an eye on. Now that we've covered those that have been added, let's look at those that are leaving the index to make room for these three stocks. First up, we have IPG Photonic Corporation. Up oh, there we go, ticker symbol IPGP. And oh, look at this, the one year return, it's about down 50%. The authors are at hold, the quant is at hold, Wall Street is still a buy, but the growth rating here is an F. If we dive in, we can look and see the EPS forward long-term growth here, three to five year, compound annual growth rate is 5.19% compared to the sector median of 15%. Even the five-year average of this company was 15.3%, so obviously something to keep an eye on if you are in that company. Up next, we have Oracle Corporation, ticker symbol O-R-C-L. Remember, we're doing this in real time. Let's go back to the summary. Share price is about $70 this week. The quant rating is still a buy. Wall Street is a hold, and the Seeking Alpha authors are also a buy. But if we dive a little bit deeper, we'll see the profitability is an A+. Remember, this is one of those legendary tech names that people really seem to enjoy. The quant rating it has been a hold for the longest time when it was $80 and $90 a share stock. Of course, with the pullback, you do have a trigger for a buy on this stock from the Seeking Alpha Quant rating system. And last but not least, this retail name has gotten destroyed this year and is leaving the S&P 500 index, and that is Under Armour, ticker symbol UAA. And man, if we go back here year to date, it's down about 50%, right? That is something 
to really take note of. The quant system is a hold, Wall Street is a buy, and Seeking Alpha authors are a buy as well. You see here with the momentum, it is a D, of course, because the three month, six month, nine month price performance is absolutely getting destroyed. So there you have it. The additions to the S&P 500 and the three stocks that are leaving. Just a reminder, the additions are on Semiconductor, ticker symbol ON, Keurig, Dr. Pepper, ticker symbol KDP, and Vici Properties, ticker symbol VICI. And we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back with our headliner today, the one, the only George Ball. It's sunny, no nuts. Stephen Kress, creator of Seeking Alpha's stock picking system. Seeking Alpha, all you need to know about investing in top stocks or in anything else. Seeking Alpha, be a better investor. Now, I'd like to welcome back to the show, George Ball, chairman at Sanders Morris Harris. George, it's great to have you back on the program. Delighted to be here. So I've got to ask you, uh, there's been quite a few developments uh, since the last time you were on with us, but what's your initial take on these thoughts of J Jamie Diamonds about this hurricane metaphor? Because, you know, I'm from Florida and I've been hit by multiples of, you know, or, of hurricanes of level one and twos multiple times, and they don't really affect the people there. Are we kind of in a similar environment within the market where if this is a, a level one hurricane, then no one really has anything to be worried about? Well, I, I know I know Jamie quite well, uh, and he uses metaphors uh, extremely thoughtfully. Uh, and the, the hurricane risk, I think, has been overplayed in the press. Number one, and number two, a the likelihood of some form of economic s slowdown in growth is very high. It's been a long time since we've had a recession of any consequence, and just the way the uh, clock ticks and ticks and ticks, we will have one at some point, but probably not a category four or five hurricane, probably a severe tropical storm, and we can weather that all right. So you're, describe to us though, what, what in your mind does a, a category four, or category five look like in regards to the market? A category four or five gets us to, seven or eight percent unemployment, a uh, economy that's contracting at a three to five percent uh, an annual rate uh, and with uh, businesses cutting back on their growth plans very substantially. We are not going to see that in 2022, three or 2024. George, that's a bold statement right there because I think a lot of people are starting to see all these tech layoffs happening. We're all watching the employment reports. I mean, it seems almost like every employment report now that everybody's saying we're forecasting it going down to 3.5%, but it hasn't budged from 3.6. Do we need uh, to be worried about that? It's popular to be a pessimist today. It's just plain popular. And the consensus is, gee, something bad is out there. Uh, the something bad is headwinds, not a capsizing of the boat. In, uh, in in my opinion, businesses are vibrant. We're probably at a lower unemployment rate than what I would call a normal minimum. And so, uh, yeah, if there are clouds on the horizon, they're clouds. Yeah, they aren't something that is going to sink the economic growth boat uh, or cause it to deviate from some form of uh, expansion uh, in any material way. So. In regards to what you just said, in regards to the market, in regards to what we're seeing now, you know, unemployment's low, we're still seeing earnings trickle through. Is your take right now with the market conditions that we're in that this is a bear market rally? Are we still in a bear market? Do we have more to fear coming up or are we finally hitting the turn? That, uh, that's a very treacherous question. Uh, the consensus is that we're in a bear market rally and the consensus is almost always wrong. In this case, I think the consensus, we are in a bear market, and what we're seeing is 
either a, a relief moment, which we've seen for the last week or two, or a re relief rally that's going to trap and trick people into coming back into the market. Um, I do think we are in a bear market. The lower prices are likely to come uh, uh, during the remainder of the year, although there is going to be something of a, uh, again, treacherous, deceptive relief rally in the uh, days and weeks just ahead. So let me ask you this, in regards to you know, the market and the uncertainty right now and, and everybody wondering, you know, the Fed kind of came out already and said, yo, we messed up, right? So does, at this point in time, does the Fed have any credibility left? Is that still is what creating this volatility is? You have these two camps where people are still very much behind Powell and others saying they've completely lost it. Uh, I think the Fed has cred credibility and they've got, they've got a big uh, uh, club in their hand and they're going to use it. Um, they are going to stamp out inflation and that is going to cause interest rates to be higher and it's going to slow down the economy. But it, it, they, they do serve the greater good in doing that. Inflation robs everybody. It robs poor people, it robs rich people, it robs businesses, it, it robs the nation. And so you've got to curtail that. Uh, and if the cost of it is uh, one to two to three percent growth rather than four or five percent growth, it's an acceptable cost. The Fed has said what it's going to do and they will follow through with it, I think. Yeah. So here in my notes, you you have investors should be raising cash. This is directly from you. So can you walk us through what you mean, how much of the allocation should be going to cash? Because I'm just wondering, because there's others out in the market saying cash is still trash. Uh, cash over the long term is trash. But over the short term, the, the stock market risk in being too heavily invested compared to the cost of inflation over the short term, uh, diminishing the purchasing power of cash is a trade-off in favor of cash. I think people should have five to 20% cash in their portfolios as a risk mitigant. And again, as a pot that they can use to get back into stocks in a bigger way uh, in three to six months. That's interesting. And then when we come back right after this break, we're gonna talk with George Ball about his picks of where he could allocate that cash at this moment in time or hold off, we'll be right back. When the right moment comes, you better not miss. Seeking Alpha's stock rating alerts. Go to your portfolio, click on the bell icon on the right, adjust alert settings, done. Never miss the right moment again. Seeking Alpha, be a better investor. Welcome back. We are here with George Ball, who just gave us the rundown of the environment, what people should be watching for, where we're going from here, but we left off talking about raising cash at this moment in time. So I'm wondering though, obviously you're not going full cash, George. Where are we starting to allocate some capital today with your picks? Uh, today, I think one wants to be broadly in stocks that are less volatile than the market overall and that also have very healthy dividends. So if they do go down five or 10 or 20%, you're still picking up a good cash on cash return. Um, a example of that would be the Master Limited Partnerships, the MLPs, uh, and there the queen of the MLPs is enterprise products. You're getting a six and a half percent yield. The dividend or the distribution has grown every year for the past 10 plus. And there's another little secret about enterprise products. Almost all their contracts have a cost of living clause in them. And so if inflation keeps going up and costs keep going up, enterprise will get more money from their existing contracts. It's one of the better inflation hedges around. And it's an example of the sort of stock that I think people want to emphasize today, as opposed to the FANG pluses that have been so popular and successful for the last decade. So you just mentioned FANG, is FANG over? Should, should investors be worried about the technology sector right now? Technology is not over. Technology is driving and is going to drive the economy and really in the world going forward. But I think the, there's going to be a shift 
in emphasis from the very big, great tech stocks, the big, the fang pluses that have been so powerful, they can't continue to grow as rapidly as they have in the past, simply because of size and scale. And they're also under definite attack from the governments and from the regulators. So shift from the fang pluses into smaller tech stocks that still have something uh, close to unlimited growth prospects ahead. And then you also have on here, one of your picks is a growth stock with below average volatility. Would you mind sharing us a little bit about CSWC? In a slowed economy, but not a disastrous economy, the Business Development Corps, of which Capital South uh, West Corp is one and a very good one that we happen to know quite well. Uh, they lend money to smaller companies and they often pick up equity kickers. Uh, Capital Southwest, Main Street uh, is another example, ones that have had very low uh, loan default uh, experience. And unless you get into a force four or five hurricane, they will continue to have very low loan loss experiences. And the equity kickers that they generally get as a part of their deals have and should continue to prove very profitable. So uh, a very high yield, eight and a half percent with extras on top of that, a comparatively low multiple of earnings and a niche that, that is uh, not going to be attacked by the giants. They make smaller loans to smaller companies. And again, in a comparatively benign or growing economy, they're going to they're gonna thrive. It's the kind of stock that you want to own today. Yeah, I want to ask you a real quick question because the last time you were on you mentioned cybersecurity was a really favorite sector, a sector yep. of yours as well right now. I mean, that, I think that was March when we had you on last. Is that still the case as well? Cybersecurity is one of the few areas where you can say there is going to be growth in revenue and earnings, no matter what, or almost no matter what, over the next year, two, and five years. So yes, cybersecurity is a good place to be. Uh, Personally, I'd be a lazy investor and buy something like HACK, which is one of the uh, ETFs that, that uh, uh, is in the cybersecurity area. So cybersecurity will grow. It's not overpriced. Uh, Hack is an ETF example, and it's a good place to put money just for the long and for the short term. George, I got one more question for you before we let you go. All of this has been Fantastic. But I've got to ask you, everybody's talking about energy right now. Do you have any thoughts about what's going on with oil? I mean, gasoline futures that are at all time high. Is that still a space that people could invest in or is it kind of you may have missed the boat? Our company is Houston based. Uh, and so we hear a lot about energy and have a number of the very senior officers of the major and minor uh, energy companies as clients of ours. At this point, I think the prospects for energy broadly are so volatile and uncertain with, with oil as $120 a barrel that I would tend to invest in the MLPs, which will benefit uh, broadly from good energy prices. But I think that the run-up in energy stocks is such that the easy money is out of it, uh, have market representation, but probably no more than that. George, thank you so much for your time today. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. You take care and have a great weekend, okay? Enjoyed it very much. Thank you. All right, everyone. Now you know what time it is. The man, the myth, the legend. He is back. Kim Khan, managing editor of Seeking Alpha. What's the catalyst watch, Kim? It's one word, Fed. And that's all anyone's going to be talking about next week. It's a summer calendar it's the you know uh, it's past earnings season even the you know the corporate event calendar is light it's just about the fed and their announcement on wednesday um you know for, um, by the numbers the market is still pricing in a 50 basis point hike and um they're expecting another kind of we're going to be data dependent press conference from jay powell so i think their you know market should be pretty well braced for what's going to happen I mean, that's going to be quite the move. Is there any possibility for 75 basis points or more? Well, I'm going to say no. Basically, Jay Powell is not Captain Pete Mitchell. He has no desire to push the envelope and go to Mach 11 or Mach 12. He wants this to be steady. He wants the soft landing. 
Um, Goldman Sachs is out with a note this week saying that they um, see, they still think that the Fed has a path to a soft landing, albeit a narrow one. And um, the the range bound trading you've seen in the market has got to be kind of reassuring to the Fed. It's not, you know it's it's been bouncing around between a few in the S and P for the levels for most of the trading days this week, and um, you know the economic indicators seem to be going the right direction. So I'm going to say no way on 75. Wow. Well, the question is how narrow, right? We all hope Powell is just uh, Tom Cruise in this case running through that trench and Top Gun to hit that, that uranium uh, deposit. Anyways, we could go on about that movie. Great movie. Kim, thank you so much. You have a great weekend, okay? Thanks, Daniel. And everyone, that wraps it up for this week's episode. Have a great weekend and stay safe out there. And remember, invest smarter, not harder.